What the hell is this in the gas tank? It's a fine day on the wet coast to work on the F1 and I'm gonna start getting a few things done. And to that purpose, I have a list. Lists are great. So today what I wanna do is I wanna get the engine running a little bit better. And to accomplish that, I'm gonna install the electric fuel pump properly mounted in the engine bay. I've gotta wire that into the ignition. I've gotta replace the ignition switch because the old one doesn't have the key and it's pretty crusty. I do have a new fuse box that I'm going to install into the truck, but I'm not going to wire anything into it just yet. I'm just going to get it into a place, drain the gas tank, tune the carb. I'll show you the bits and pieces that I've got for that. The first one being the fuse block. I was thinking at first that I might need a total of maybe four fuses for this vehicle, like ignition and headlights and stuff like that. But then I realized later on when I get this onto the Dodge 2500, I'm going to need more circuits. So I went and bought a... 12 circuit fuse block. It's the blade style. It has these little LEDs on there that light up if the fuse is blown. I don't know how useful that's going to be. As always, I put a link to this stuff in the description of the video. You can check it out if you like. I'm going to find a spot for this. I don't think I'm going to have it inside the engine bay just because of dampness. I'll probably mount it inside the cab somewhere, but I'm not going to wire any circuits in it today. The second thing I got was a new ignition switch. Pretty straightforward. It has starter, ignition, accessories, and battery. It's exactly the same thing as what's already in the truck, but the difference is this one has the keys, which is gonna make a big difference. Bought a couple little plugs and stuff for the carburetor. I've got some ports on there that this engine doesn't use. I need to block off those vacuum ports so the engine's gonna run fine. Drain the gas tank, get the fuel pump wired in, then I can start working on the carburetor because then I can turn the key and start the engine or I can turn the ignition on and use my remote start, which is a lot more convenient now. So time to get at her. So I cleaned out all the stuff that was in here and I pulled out the non-mounted seat, which was quite trivial, to get access to the gas tank to try and drain it out. And while I was doing that, I found this underneath the seat. This is so cool. This is the actual radio delete that came with a truck 73 years ago. And it goes in right there. That is one of the most art deco things I've ever seen. I love it. And I can't wait to get this dash cleaned up and get that installed. I may not even put a radio in this thing. Anyways, time to install the ignition switch. All right, I'm swapping out the old ignition switch with the new one. I did buy one that looks to be absolutely identical to the one that's in there. And yes, I have disconnected the battery, so I can't accidentally short those out. So on the back of the original one that's in here, the center one is the starter, same as the new one and it has an ignition section, an accessory section, and a battery section. So all I need to really do is transfer these over to this new switch, which I have the key for, and add the actual fuel pump, because it's electric now, to the ignition side. So when the ignition is on, the fuel pump gets power, provides uh, gasoline to the carburetor. So first thing first, Get all these little fasteners off. This is kind of exciting because once I do this and I get the carburetor tuned up, if all else is well, this truck will be minimally drivable. And out with the literal old. This is actually a pretty good quality unit made in Mexico. Cool. It's got a better body than this one. This one looks a lot thinner than that, but maybe at some point in the future, I'll replace this with some type of electronics. What do I mean by that? Like a Bluetooth key fob, where there'll be a push button start. I need to find out a better mounting system for this because it's not the right ignition key for the hole in the dashboard here. It'll do for now. Let's give it a try, see if the truck turns over now, or if I let out the magic blue smoke. All 
right. Ignition switch replaced. Fuel pump wired into ignition and it works. Next, properly install the fuel pump. Okay, so I have the electric fuel pump installed now. I just drilled a couple of holes in the inner fender and put some sheet metal screws to hold it on and wired it into the ignition switch. And I just have some clear uh, pipe here. You can see I already put some fuel in there to see if it would pull, it does. And when I turn on the ignition, it does that. It's pretty damn loud. I know it is a little bit quieter when it's got fuel to pump. Right now it's just whatever pistons in there it is just bouncing around with nothing to work against. This is very much a temporary solution. I had a viewer named Marcus comment on my previous video that he had the same kind of problem with a Jeep Commando that he picked up and the pump would not work until he primed it. So thanks for that tip, Marcus. I'm gonna give that a try, but for now I'm just gonna use the electric pump. So I just realized that with all these attempts at starting, I'm not 100% sure if the truck is in park. No once has it tried to move, so I'm gonna I check the transmission fluid level because I suspect it's pretty low. Let's see what's on this dipstick. Uh, yeah. That isn't even at the ad line. That's barely, barely even there. Um, it doesn't look what is on there. It doesn't look too horrible. It's kind of gritty though. Why would that be gritty? I'm gonna pull the transmission pan and have a look. See what fresh new hell this is. It's always a good start. So the filter looks pretty clean, surprisingly. Not a lot of debris up in there. The oil isn't as burnt as I expected it to be. Doesn't look to be too old. It's still pretty much a clear red color, almost like strawberry syrup. Let's go have a look at what's in the pan. But before I do, one nice thing about not always using air tools, take stuff off like this really quickly, if you do it manually, you can have a look around at stuff while you're unscrewing bolts. And you can end up noticing things like this transmission cross member is resting on the exhaust. The bolt has come loose and it's disconnected. See it here on this side. I'll have to get a bolt for that. And it looks like there's one missing here for the transmission itself. So the contents of the oil pan don't look too hideous. I mean, there's obvious debris from the clutch discs in here. The only thing that has me a little concerned is this white stuff. I don't know what that is. There's some over there too. It's like jelly. Um, you know, I'd almost think it's something like coolant had gotten in, like if the radiator had an intercooler for the transmission and it sprung a leak, but it's only a small amount of it. I guess maybe water got in there at some time. It's, that's all I can think it is. Well, I'm gonna clean this pan out, put it back on, fill it with transmission fluid. The transmission all buttoned up again and I've thrown in four quarts of ATF, automatic transmission fluid. In this case, it's Dextron 3. I, uh, I'm going to start working on getting this carburetor tuned and see if I can get this thing running smoothly. One hour later. <laughs> she runs, but she runs poorly. I can't get her to idle. I've messed with the idle adjustment. I just cannot get the truck to idle. I have to keep giving it gas with the accelerator. I think this engine is toast. I'm gonna to pull the rocker cover off and have a look at the valves and see. The 
valves look all right. I mean, I don't see any obvious problems of obvious bent push rods. I'm gonna button this up and see what's next on my list. So I did a little bit of investigating and there's no, uh, there's no fuel flowing through this supply line. I hooked up my compressor and tried to force some air through the fuel line into the tank and there's nothing moving either way. So I think what I'm gonna have to end up doing is pulling the tank out and dealing with that way, finding out what's going on in there. And the cool thing about these little trucks is that under the gas tank, they have a pet cock, which you can turn the fuel on and off. Now, I'm not getting any fuel to the fuel pump. I suspect it's been closed. I shook the truck. I can hear some sloshing around in there. I'm pretty sure there's fuel in there, so this might be closed. I'm gonna shoot a little penetrant oil on there and see if I can get something to come out of the fuel line in the engine compartment. I'm gonna give that a shot too, in case I have to undo it at that point. All right, I'll let, that, let that soak for a moment or two. I don't know how seized up this is gonna be, but let's find out. Also, I don't know whether it's turn right. Let's open it up. Close it. Well, the petcock's all, all the way in now, and nothing has dribbled out of the fuel line out front. So I'm gonna back it all the way open, assuming that it was already in the flow position. Well, I can't put this gas tank off any longer. I need to deal with it. And the way I need to do that is by taking it out of the cab there's nothing draining out of the bottom. I'm gonna disconnect the fuel line. I'm gonna cut that really disgusting little rubber sleeve that's on the neck. I need to replace that. And then I'm gonna unbolt the tank. I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna drain it. And then I'm gonna check the condition of the actual fuel line that runs along the frame rail. Maybe the plug is in there. Not sure, I'll figure it out. I'm not surprised that no fuel is flowing out of this tank. This is what was sitting in the filler neck, and I'm sure there's a bunch of it in the tank. So, we gotta deal with this tank anyways. You can just see all this gunk resting on the filler neck. Yikes, paper. Oh, that's gross. <laughs> All right, I have the gas tank out. It is a basket case on the inside. I mean, the metal is great. It's strong. There's no, there's no perforations in here. It's in really good condition. Even the exposed area, the petcock that goes through the cab floor is in really good condition. A little bit of surface rust here no big deal my problem is it's full of gunk i've got half a tank of gas in there that smells disgusting i wish i could share that with you but well i guess i can't till they invent smell of vision the inside is a mess any of you guys and gals watching this if you have any suggestions on how to clean gross old gas and corrosion and sludge from the inside of an old tank with baffles i'd love to hear it well, it's been a humbling and a learning experience working on the 1950 Ford F1. 
I have learned that the gas tank is an absolute mess. The fuel line that goes from the tank to the engine compartment is completely blocked. I tried to push 110 psi of air through it, nothing, blocked solid. The engine is really hurt. I couldn't get it to idle. I can get it to run, I can't get it to idle. Can't drive this thing at all. The transmission has forward gears and no reverse, so does that. I guess the next thing to do now is to pull the 302 and a C4 transmission out of a car I have in the back of the property and put it into this truck. It should just drop right in. Famous last words, right? If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. I'd appreciate it. And if you like what I'm doing with the channel, why not subscribe? This thing will eventually run. Now, there's only one thing left to do. Cross things off the list. Oh, I didn't do the fuse box. I did get the fuel pump installed. Yeah, we'll say drain gas tank. I gotta do that. Oh, tube carb. Can't even do it with the engine. Thanks for watching.